Good morning. Welcome as we gather together this Easter Sunday, more correctly called the Sunday of the Resurrection of our Lord. Welcome to all of you who are joining us online or in the Fellowship Hall. It is great to see you. I invite you to send down the blue friendship books, uh, put your name and other information there, and then send them back to the center. Andrew is our youth and family uh, ministry director. He has a few words. Good morning. Uh, just a quick thank you to the youth who got up early and helped us with our sunrise service. It was very special. We had two baptisms, so praise the Lord for that. I uh, just wanted to remind you that youth group is resuming after taking a break for Lent. It's resuming on Wednesday at 6.30. Also in your uh, bulletin, there's a number of uh, announcements about different events this week. Uh, I'm going to a special event called A Teammate for Life tomorrow. You can join me if you want. Men's Barbecue Friday, Mom's Group on Tuesday. Pretty much something going on every day. So if you uh, want more details, look in your worship guide. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Andrew. And then notice on the top of that bulletin insert page, there are a number of classes that will be next week and the following weeks, parenting, Bible study on Acts, and then our new member uh, class begins, as well as a class on Martin Luther. A couple notes about our worship today. There will be two times that we will divide up men and women as we are singing. Please notice that that is our um, uh, hymn of praise and then our sermon hymn. So please uh, notice that. The other thing is our traditional greeting today we will practice very quietly. I will say, he is risen, and you will respond, he is risen indeed. Right. But when we do it, you can be bigger, okay? We worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand.
I'm going to give you a little help. So you're going to turn to the front part of your hymnals, 140, and we're going to sing the hymn of praise, Dividing Men and Women. And then look at your bulletin for the Easter greeting. Okay, are you ready? He is risen. He is risen. Easter Day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on a cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. Come on down. Good to see you this morning. You know, as I was reflecting this morning, it's pretty cool that we're here celebrating Jesus' resurrection today, but there are people all over the world who are celebrating today as well. Did you know that I grew up in Russia for some time? Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. So I was going to teach you a little Russian. Do you want to learn a little Russian? So we did, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. So I'm going to say, Christos vas Chris. And you're going to, you're going to try to say, Va istina vas Chris. So vas Chris is resurrected. Va istina vas Chris. Do you want to try it? Well, the adults can, I'll do it again. Christos vas Chris. And then you're going to say, Va istina vas Chris. Okay, we'll try. Maybe the adults can help too. All right. 
Christos vas Chris. One more time. Christos vas Chris. Va Istana vas Chris. So I grew up celebrating Eastern Russian. Another cool thing that I just wanted to share with you, and I'm going to share with you more. I hope you can come to the Easter egg hunt, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. But this is something called the uh, Evangel Cube. I've used this in India to share the gospel. And I'm just going to go through it real quickly. It kind of tells the story. And, uh, you know, God created us to be with him, Adam and Eve. Everything was perfect, and they were in the garden. But Adam and Eve sinned, and so they were separated from God. And so we're all born separated from God in our sin. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And so in order for us, we're separated from God. But, thankfully, Jesus came, lived a perfect life, a sinless life, and died on the cross and took our, the punishment for our sins that we deserve. So he died on the cross for our sins. And then, make sure I get this right, they laid him in a tomb and they put two guards at the entrance, actually more than that. And what happened on Easter Sunday? He rose, he rose again. Jesus raised him from the dead. Uh, we, talked, uh, we see in the Gospels how angels came and people came. They expected, the disciples came, Mary came. They expected him to be there. He wasn't there because he has risen. And because he has risen from the dead, we can, are, have a way to be uh, in relationship with God. We are no longer separated from him through the cross. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except except through me. You got it right. So it's through Jesus and his death and resurrection that we can be reunited with God. He has done what is necessary so that we can be his children. So that's just a little bit way. I've used this in India and other countries to share the gospel. And we'll talk a little bit more about it at the Easter account. So I hope you can come. Can I pray for you? No. Father, we thank you that Jesus is risen. And we thank you that there are people all over the world today that you call your sons and your daughters and who are our brothers and sisters. Lord, fill us with joy at your resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know. Are you ready? I don't know. Thank you. Good morning. The first lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 10. <clears throat> then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to all the people and to testify that he is the only one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Second lesson is from First Corinthians.
The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though, I was not, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Be Please be seated. So today we hear the good news. You know it. You know how it goes. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And we hear from Paul in that second lesson, which is from 1 Corinthians. He says, I remind you of the good news that I proclaim to you that you in turn received, in which you stand, through which you are saved. He says, I handed on to you this good news, which is of first importance. What you wear, where you go to school, what people think of you, how much you make, where you live, what you drive, are all secondary or third or fourth or fifth or sixth considerations. This is first. One, that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and was buried. That he was raised from the dead on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that he appeared, he showed up to his disciples, and he shows up in our lives. That's first importance. We go through these three. The first one has kind of two, but think of three. What are they? That Christ died and buried 
and that he was raised. raised, and that he appeared, or he shows up, died. Where did he die? On what? He died on the cross. Why? Was he dangerous? Was he dishonest? Was he a criminal? Did he deserve it? No. Who did? <coughs> Us. So then why did he die? He died for us. He died for the sake of our sins. He died in our place. He died for us to atone for our sin. And the fact of it, most of us say, well, I'm not that bad. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty good. I haven't robbed any banks. I haven't stolen any cars. Uh, my record is pretty good legally. But when we look closer, we realize that I am not the person I want to be, let alone the person God wants me to be. When push comes to shove, I realize that I'm in it for myself. Luther says we are turned in upon ourselves, curved in. And so there's a piece of me in everything I do. If you have an argument with somebody else, who do you want to win? Don't say them. No, it's always me. During COVID, when you were confined with four walls with your family whom you love dearly, how was that? How did, on the barometer, how was your patience, your kindness, your understanding? Maybe we should ask more, how was your frustration? It was just a simple litmus test of who we are. Pretty much every Sunday we confess we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. In what we have done, but also in what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And then in our heart of hearts, when we think, when we ponder, each of us can remember some things that we are ashamed of. Things that we would rather not have anyone else know. And as that thought is in your head, how you failed, then hear this. Jesus Christ died for you. And on that cross, he took your sin, your failures, your shame, and he took it on himself. And so it is no longer on your shoulders, but on his. And he nails it to the cross. Luther says, he tramples it underfoot. No longer on your shoulders, but his. And so Paul says, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. What scriptures? Generally we'd say, well, it says that in the Gospels. And yet the Gospels weren't written when Paul was writing. They came later. And so what scriptures would we hear that he died for our sins? Has to be in the Old Testament. And one of the most clear words is in the prophet Isaiah. Listen to what he says. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, each to their own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. And by his stripes, do you remember? We are healed. That's the scripture that Paul is pointing to when he says, Christ died for us, for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures. And later, John the Baptist will point to Jesus and say, there, here, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
His death, our life. He becomes sin. We become forgiven. He died for us on the cross and was buried, kind of in that died piece. Where did he bury him? In the tomb. Who buried him? Joseph of Arimathea. Arimathea was somewhere north, uh, west of Jerusalem, some miles. He was a member of the Jewish council, a secret follower of Jesus. He's the one that went to ask Pilate for Jesus' body. You remember what Pilate did? Pilate scratched his head and said, I, I, he wondered if Jesus was already dead. And so he sent for the centurion and asked him if Jesus were dead already. And when he found out from the centurion that Jesus was what? Dead. dead. He gave Joseph the body of Jesus. It's clear Jesus was dead. And so Joseph took Jesus' body off the cross, laid him in a tomb, and rolled that stone against the door. There were some women who saw that. They were the same women who saw Jesus take his last breath. They included Mary Magdalene. And now they are looking at Joseph and his people putting Jesus' body into the tomb. They see which tomb it is. They see where it is. They saw the stone rolled against the door of the tomb. And they thought, well, that's it. The end of the story. Crucified. Died. Buried. But that was Friday. And Sunday is coming. Remember, first on Paul's list of what's the most important, Christ died and was buried. But then on the third day, what happened? Oh, he was raised again. On the third day, those same women were going to the tomb. Why were they going? No, to show their respects, to anoint his body. The burial hadn't been completed. There wasn't enough time. There were only some minutes before sundown. And all the work needs to be done by sundown. Because the next day is the Sabbath. The Sabbath begins at sundown. So they were able to do a few things. But he hadn't had a proper burial. And so they're going to do the last caring things they can give him. And as they go, they ask a question. Remember the question? Oh, that stone. Who is going to roll it away? Who's going to remove it? And as they ponder this and they come closer, they look up. And the first surprise is that they find that the stone has already been rolled back. And as they approach the tomb and they go in, they realize a second surprise. They're not alone there. There's someone inside. It's a young man. He's in a white robe. Sounds like an angel. And they're afraid. And then comes the good news. The angel says, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. It's where he was, but no longer. He is not here. He has been raised. The Easter message that we know, the one who died for us and was buried, no longer dead but alive. And so we say, he is risen. He is risen but the angel is not finished. The angel now says, go and tell his disciples he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Not only alive, but he'll show his face. He promises to be with you. He promises to show up in their lives, and in ours. It's the third thing that Paul mentions, these things of first importance. Christ, what? Died, and was buried, and he was? And then he appeared. He showed himself. First it was to Cephas. Who's Cephas? It's the Aramaic name for Peter. He showed himself to Peter and then to the 12 disciples. 
and then a whole bunch of people, and they all realized that he was alive. They discovered he wasn't in the tomb, he wasn't dead, but he's on the loose. He's on his way, and he's doing his creative and redeeming work in everyone's life. Alive, going ahead of you. Ahead to where? Galilee. What's so special about Galilee? Where are we supposed to go to find him? Galilee was where the disciples were from. It's their place. It's their home. It's, it's the familiar place. Everything ordinary for them was in Galilee. And so Jesus is telling us, he's going ahead of you to the most familiar places you know. Work, school, store, gas station, church, home. Every place you put your foot, that's where he is. Everywhere you look, that's where he is. Everyone you see, he is with them and working with them and just waiting for a chance for them to hear a bit of good news, a bit of encouragement, a bit of welcome. He's alive. The first importance, he died and was buried. He was raised from the dead on the third day, and now he shows up in our lives. But what if you think this is too good to be true? What if you think, well, it's true for everybody else, but not for me? Not for who I am. Not for where I've been. Not for what I've done. So for you, listen what Paul says next in the text. Yes, Jesus appeared to Peter and the twelve, five hundred, most of whom are still alive, then to James, his brother, and to all the apostles. Last of all, says Paul, he appeared to me. As one untimely born, translated another way, like a stillbirth, a miscarriage, I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church. I arrested people. I threw them in prison. Some of them died. I am the least unworthy to be called an apostle. But by his grace, his love toward me was not in vain. Later, in another letter, Paul will say, Christ, Jesus, came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Christ died. Remember what Paul says is of first importance? Say it with me. Christ died and was buried. He was raised on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. And he appeared, he shows up, and he still does. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open for his word. Keep your heart open to where he is leading you. For he's not in the tomb. He is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
you to turn to the front part of your hymnals, page 105. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, the women woke up to do what they knew they needed to do. They made their way in the dark to the tomb. And there they were expecting death. We often wake up expecting the same. With fear we face the day. With depression we find it hard to wake up. Our eyes dimmed with the past, with our guilt, with our anxiety of the future. And we hesitate to get out of bed. Lord, the women when they came to the tomb, found something entirely different than they expected. You were not there. You were not dead. You were alive and on the loose and waiting for them. Lord, the same is true for us. Every day you are waiting for us, by our side, out in front, 
in the very places that we dread. You are there. We are not alone. Lord, give us sight to see, faith to believe, hearts that know the truth. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you came to die not only for us, but for a broken and hurting world. Everywhere we look, someone is hurting physically, or they've got relationships that are broken, trust that has been fractured. They look and they can't make the ends meet in their bank account and their finances. There is struggle and trouble everywhere. This is the world you came to save. Lord, we pray that your goodness would rest upon each person, however they may suffer. Give sleep to the deprived, food to the hungry, encouragement to the depressed, a way out to those who are trapped, freedom for those who are addicted. Lord, answer prayers in this hurting world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our missionaries, Didi and Serafina Panzo in the Congo of Africa. We pray especially for the orphans that they feed. We pray that mouths may be filled, stomachs filled, hunger pains disappear. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those in our midst, for Valerie, Robin, Sherry and Lynn, Jody, Electa, Kathy and Dorothy. We pray for our tiny twins, Nathan and Jaden. Keep your hands upon them. Also for Bill, Don, Dave, Dwayne, and for all we mention silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus, your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The peace of the Lord will be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace with one another.
The offering prayer is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift your heart to him. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, he is the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, cherubim and seraphim, we join their prayers and their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are In the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy, eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for your grace shown to your people of every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. As you come to his table, I invite you to form two lines. You will receive the bread. Our assisting ministers will pour the wine. When you are finished, place your empty glass in a basket and return to your place. Please be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>